Hello Internet, in this video we are going to be picking back up with our uh, grid snapped vertex shader thing. Um, I, I asked for good ideas in the comments and people left some good ideas and that kind of gave me inspiration to keep going with this. And so that's exactly what we're going to do. I have imported a animated mesh and also imported a particle system and applied a mesh to that. Uh, so hopefully we get some interesting things to come out of this. I don't exactly know what I expect, but I think that's sort of the fun of this. Uh, so, so we're, we're going to see. Um, what we're going to be trying to do is make this a world space snapped uh, shader. And so what that means is right now everything is object space. Everything is relative to the object, which means that if I rotate these objects, they actually rotate. Uh, and that's not what I want. What I'm actually looking for is for everything to be snapped to a grid in world space, um, sort of like you see this grid in my scene. Uh, we want that to be how the vertexes are snapped. So every object, no matter where it is and what its relation is, what rotation it has, is all going to be snapped to some global grid. Uh, and hopefully this kind of creates like a voxel style thing. Um, it shouldn't be too hard. I think it's just a two line change. Um, but just to kind of show off what local space looks like, um, it's this. Uh, I don't have any plans to fix the lighting because I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, like I said, there, there's an animated mesh here. Um, this is snapped to an eighth of a unit. Um, so 0 0.125 is the grid size. Uh, so on the right hand side there, you can kind of see what the, <laughs> the normal model should look like. And then on the left, you can see what the grid snapped version looks like. Uh, kind of looks like a really old retro graphic style, just worse. <laughs> um, I, I don't know a better way to describe it. It's very buggy. It looks like a very glitchy something. Maybe there's an effect that you could create that required some sort of glitching thing. Um, you can also see the particle system doesn't look normal. <laughs> um, that's because there is some like growing that's going on in the objects. There's actually some scaling that's happening. I think this is just a default particle system that I added a force to to drop it. Um, I'm pretty sure once we snap that to world space, this is going to look really cool. It just doesn't right now. Um, and we can tweak that. I, this is probably just going to be a whole video of tweaking this to, to make this look more interesting. Um, but what we want is world space stuff. Um, and the expectation is that as we move things, uh, once it's snapped to world space coordinates, it should stay that way. Um, or it should look more like things are crawling and shifting rather than just spinning in place or moving around. Um, so this is weird. Uh, let's go here. <laughs> this is the code for the shader. Uh, I covered all of this in the previous video, so we're not going to go through all of it. The interesting part is in this vertex shader. Uh, we are going to be making these changes only in the surface shader. Uh, I think that that's more interesting. Uh, the math might change slightly in this other uh, shader, but you should just be able to, to apply the same concepts here to get a similar effect. There's not much that's, that's actually different. It's just a, a different syntax or, or a different math. I, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Anyway, uh, what we want to do is take the object space coordinates that we have here and convert them into world space coordinates. And the way you do that is you say it equals the multiplication of uh, object to world. Uh, this is actually a shorthand for unity object to world. Um, it's a matrix. Matrix multiplication means it's going to take all your vertices and multiply it by something, which is sort of the transform of an object. Effectively, what a unity transform is, is just a matrix. And that is going to multiply it by the scale, the rotation, and the uh, position of whatever it is. In this case, it's going to give you a matrix that is going to be able to translate something from relative space, so it's relative to itself, into something that is relative to the world. Um, so it's going to rotate that and do all of the fun things that it needs to in order to get that positioned in the world. Uh, and we're just going to multiply our vertex by that. And then uh, semicolons, semicolons are important. Uh -huh. Once we do all of that, we're just going to do the same math that we had. So now we're in world space coordinates. We can do the same math, do the same grid snapping that we were doing. And then we just need to undo that. Um, and the best way that I can think to do that is just undo it. Um, so just multiply from world to object. Uh, if, if I save this and go back to Unity, Unity is going to compile that. 
and we get this. I don't know if this is right, um, but you should actually see these change. So Unity is actually going to change this for us to the actual name of the matrix. Um, that, what I had was a shorthand. Um, so Unity underscore world to object and Unity underscore object to world are two matrices that you can use to sort of move between these coordinate spaces and kind of do this thing. Um, but that should be the only changes we need to actually get this working. I don't know why the particle system is doing the thing that it's doing, because that doesn't look right to me. But um, yeah, don't know. Uh, but what we should see is if I were to select this cube, we should see as we move it now, you can kind of see the vertices kind of crawling. Um, I don't know if it's super apparent, but as we move, things are sort of snapped in place and then move with us. Previously, when they were object space, nothing would have changed because we were just moving an object that already had fixed values. Um, but now they, they are changing. Um, so if we go back here, we should be able to see that. And what that means is like uh, with this circle or the, the sphere, as I rotate it, we should see very little change. We will see some. Uh, and that's because this is not a perfect sphere. It's still made of vertices that are still rotating around. Um, so as I rotate this, we are going to see some changes, uh, but there it's not the object actually rotating. So the vertices themselves that it's snapping to aren't rotating. Uh, <laughs> that doesn't look great, um, but OK. Uh, I think it's working. It, it, this is one of those things that's hard to tell. I don't know why the particle system is doing what it's doing, though. Um, I expected this to, to be more interesting, and it's not. And I don't know why. Render alignment, world space. That might be more like, yeah. So I think this is, this is closer. I think if I do two things here, if I change this, use a sphere. Uh, <laughs> that isn't exactly what I wanted. But if we use a sphere and then change this to be some larger number like 0 0.5, Oh, we get something uh, again. Lighting is broken, so this looks not great. Uh, but we definitely get like cubes that are moving between one another with this effect. Uh, you could do this with a, a smaller grid size, probably, and and get a nicer looking effect. Uh, but if you make this grid size bigger than the particle, like say one. Um, you're going to get some weird results and that's sort of expected. This is not not an exact science. This is a hack um, and it is very, very obviously a hack uh, because things are kind of weird. But uh, there's our whatever that is. This is some uh, mechanism example from Unity, I think. I don't really know where I got this mesh from, but um, it's there and it should be good. So. There is a example animated character. We have all these other things. We can move them around and actually like see the object kind of shift. And so as you move things together, they kind of move and kind of share the same uh, effects, I guess. Uh, what I was trying to do with the particle system is kind of show that the best. Uh, and it might help if we do something dumb. <laughs> like uh, set this to say 50. Uh, my computer really doesn't like that. <laughs> but uh, but doing something like this, we kind of get a very uniform thing. I can't imagine this is going to encode well. <laughs> Typically, lots of colors changing is a, is a bad thing for video. Um, but, but this is sort of actually kind of an interesting effect. You kind of get the um, marching cubes style out of this without actually doing marching cubes because this is not how, how you do that um, but it's kind of like a hacky version of that and sort of gives you that old like minecrafty slash retro style without having to do a lot of the work to get that effect um it's definitely more broken than than most of those things um but i think it's kind of cool uh, so maybe there's a way we can fix the lighting. I looked and I 
didn't see anything obvious. For this to actually work, we would need to change the normals. Um, and that effectively means adjusting them so that they actually face the correct direction. I do not know a way to actually get that information out. Um, what we would, what we would ideally want is to be able to grab the triangle back out and use some cross products or something to calculate a normal here. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> um, uh, at least not in, in the shader. Uh, we could do this in the mesh, but we're not actually doing anything to the mesh here. Um, if you access the mesh inside of Unity, you're not going to get any of this information. So if you're trying to calculate collisions or anything like that, none of this is going to be there because it's, it's all happening in a shader. So this is only happening on your GPU. Uh, if you look at the Unity mesh thing, you're going to see a normal sphere here uh, or a normal particle system or a normal <laughs> random blocky dude. Um, th that kind of stuff is, is all happening in our shader. Uh, and, and when you access Unity's mesh objects, that, that hasn't happened yet. Um, so, so depending on what you're trying to do, maybe this is useful. Uh, this just seemed like something that would be really fun. I feel like using world space coordinates here actually is more useful than just using object space coordinates for this kind of effect. Because it kind of makes the entire scene work together. Um, I say work, and my scene looks like this. Um, so, so maybe work is not the, the best word to use here, uh, but it kind of, it kind of, I don't know, makes the entire effect work with other applications of that effect. Um, and maybe there is some art style that can actually use this. I really don't know. Um, if you have ideas, I might, I might try to force this into a project that I have at some point, uh, just because at this point I'm just really intrigued by this. Um, but I'm kind of at a loss for where to take it. Uh, I'm going to be continue looking into how to do lighting on these, because uh, I think if we can fix the lighting, I think it would improve the effect significantly. I just do not know how, how we're, we're going to approach that. Uh, maybe, maybe there's a way that I'm not thinking of, but right now I'm kind of lost there. Uh, so if you have ideas, let me know. Um, either drop a comment in the video or come and join our Discord server. There's a link in the description. Uh, other than that, I'll leave it here. I think this is pretty much enough. Um, there should be source code that kind of talks about at least how to do this in the description as well. So if you want to kind of play with this yourself, go for it. Um, and yeah, I'll leave it here. So I guess until next time, see you, Internet.